Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, oh my god, it's another episode of oh, Wild Life. Life. Uh, this is a Wild Life podcast where we, you know, are just two friends, you know, casually talking and bantering about Wild Life. Wild Life. I am Sean. I'm Felicia. And to start this episode off, mm-hmm. I need to ask you a question. Yeah. You guys have already seen it in the title. But Felicia, what? Have you ever looked at a puppy? A very cute little small little puppy uh-huh. looked into its eyes and thought to yourself, How do I lie to this creature? No! How do I ruin its life through deceit? No, I'm never thinking of you, that. You should think of it. Why? Because it's October and it's the month of Halloween and we are going to discuss about the horrors of deceit. <laughs> Scary Very nature. scary, very scary indeed. <laughs> so, yes, and as you can see, we are in our outfits, you know. I am in a very uh, skinny uh, skeleton onesie. And Felicia is... A s- scarecrow. Uh, I am someone who forgot the onesie memo and uh, <laughs> so put she together stuck, something. Yeah, she stuck uh, <laughs> flowers, dried flowers in her hair and, yes. and got into a, uh, uh, what's this, a jumper. Yeah, a little onesie situation uh, going on. Yeah, it's, it was just a jumper. Okay, a jumper. <laughs> and she's a scarecrow. Yes, yeah, so we are actually going to talk about mm-hmm. dressing up. Yes. Halloween is all about dressing up and, mm-hmm. and, and being something that you're not. Yes. Right? And in, and in nature, animals also do just that. But not just on Halloween, for their whole life. Oh. <laughs> they do this for survival. Ooh. Yes, so in the animal world, you know, it's all about survival of the fittest, right? Yes. And... How do animals do that? I'm pretty sure you all have heard of camouflage. Yes. Right? So, you know, um, like Felicia, blending into her surroundings That's of, right. of plants I'm and brown materials. Correct. I'm blending into the sofa. <laughs> yes. I'm blending into the sofa. Yes. But today is not about camouflage. Today we're going to talk about mimicry. Mm-hmm. Right? Dressing up as something that you're not. Ooh. Right? So, there are actually several kinds of mimicry. Um, and broadly speaking, you can categorize them into two main uh, uh, types of mimicry. Mm. Right? Defensive mimicry and aggressive mimicry mm. right so for for defense mimicry i think a lot of you uh, have heard of such things before where usually a more vulnerable and harmless animal mm. they have evolved to look like a more uh, dangerous animal so as to make sure that predators avoid them yeah right so this is a very defense kind of of, of tactic yeah but the less well-known kind of mimicry is the aggressive mimicry mm. so this is observed in predators and parasites So what usually happens is that these animals, they would mimic the appearance of the prey animals themselves Mm. or or in other species of animals that are not so dangerous to the prey. So this would uh, allow their prey to lower their guard. And then this would actually lure them to to go closer to the predator animal. And then they would just consume their meal. That is so cunning. (laughs) Yes, so you might be thinking, Mm. Singapore got such animals, man. Like, don't have leh? Have like you did your own research. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to support. <laughs> but yes, we do have such animals who employ this uh, mimicry, uh, mimicry tactics uh, into their lives yes. in Singapore. Yes. We do have them. We do. Actually, I did my research too. I have some to share with you. So <laughs> Yeah. So, weaver ants. Have you heard of them? Yeah. No, <laughs> okay, you're supposed to say no so I can go further into it. But of course you know about them. I mean, weaver ants, that is little red ants that are... Your Singaporean are red ants. Yes. Are, basically, they, they weave leaves together to make mm. their nests. Yeah. Okay. And also, do they kind of like interlace with each other? Yeah, they do. They do, right? They do, yeah. So sometimes when they do such like interlacing, they actually kind of look a little bit like a worm or a caterpillar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So very um, aptly because we are going to talk about a caterpillar that kind of mimics this mm, ants. Yeah. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Okay. And the caterpillar that we're talking about is the caterpillar of the Arabid moth. Yeah, so you, when you think of a caterpillar, right, they are mostly, I mean, they are mostly defenseless-ish. So in order to prevent that, they kind of mimic themselves to weaver ants. Mm. So basically, ants have this reputation of being very aggressive and just basically not very nice to taste. La. And also, ants have this um, defense mechanism where they produce formic acid. So it tastes really bad for anyone who's, tr- who's trying to eat this mm. ant. Yeah. So how the caterpillar tries to mimic this ant is really to have two black dots on its butt, like of a scientific term. So the, the, posterior, the, posterior, the posterior. The posterior region of their body. Oh yes, you should always listen to the science guy. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so having these two black dots, right, it mimics like the ant's eyes. So just above the two black dots, you'll be able to see two antennae um, just resting above. So it looks like, you know, like an ant feelers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so all these features, they slowly adapt so that they look more and more like the ant. 
really just to like protect themselves from being eaten by other predators. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and and before we move on to the next animal, mm-hmm. we are going to do something very special. Mm-hmm. We have an ad break. Ooh, we have our very first sponsor. Being a one-man nature film crew for Little Red Jungle is tough work. From stalking animals, to editing, and to designing animations, a lot of time and work goes behind the scenes for each of our videos. But all of it is worth it because I've got big dreams for this channel. Dreams of having Little Red Jungle become a legitimate educational video production entity in Singapore where I can hire a crew not just to produce more videos, but even better videos. And helping us get closer to this dream, I'd like to thank our sponsor, you. So if you like what we do here on Little Red Jungle and you would like to support us, join me on my brand new Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Little Red Jungle. By contributing, not only will you help sustain this channel through our daily expenses, you would also help strengthen our voice for the nature in Singapore. Remember, we can't protect something we don't know about. And so we need to have more Singaporeans care about the hidden wonders in our local forests. So come join me once again at patreon.com forward slash little red jungle. On a side note, the first 50 patrons will get a set of exclusive Little Red Jungle stickers. Ah, okay, now back to the show. Thank you sponsors for sponsoring this video. Wow, okay. <laughs> hey, but Amazing. yes, back to mimicry. Mm. You know, there are indeed animals that mm. would try to mimic ants to eat ants. Wow. Right? So for my next animal, I'm going to talk about the ant snatching assassin bug. That sounds very intense. The ant snatching assassin bug. Ooh. However, unlike yours, which have evolved through millennia, uh, through the millennia to look like an ant. Okay. This bug still looks like an assassin bug. Oh. But its trick is way more disturbing. Ooh. So its trick is in order to look like ants, they would take the dead bodies oh my gosh. of the ants that they have eaten and stick it on themselves. <laughs> they stick the corpses of the, the of their devoured ant prey and they paste it on themselves with this sticky substance that they secrete. And basically this makes them look like a bundle of ants and it makes them smell like a bundle of ants. Oh, they won't smell like dead corpses? They would smell like a bundle of dead end corpses. Oh god! <laughs> but I mean, it, it, this does um, cover up their scent. This is truly a Halloween special. <laughs> oh my god! And, and, and so basically, this allows the assassin bug to infiltrate the end nests mm. or the end colonies to eat more ants. Oh my gosh! But this serves both as a defensive and aggressive form of mimicry because like I said, looking like ants have its own benefits. Mm-hmm. So by having a whole bundle of ants, you know, stuck to your back. Not just any ants. Dead ants. <laughs> Dead ants. It actually breaks their silhouette, mm. you know, and, and doesn't make them look anything like an assassin bug anymore. Yeah. And, and um, some of their predators, like the spiders who eat uh, assassin bugs, mm. they do not see an assassin bug anymore. Yeah. They see a ball of dead ants yeah. walking around. Yeah. Um, and I, I think if you, if you think about it, right, Avery, you know how and when, when ants are, you know when they bundle together to carry their, their food? Oh, yes. Like a dead bug, they all bundle together, right? Mm. It looks just like that one. Oh, that's true. Right. Yeah, it just looks like they're doing its thing, like it's normal daily routine. Yeah, so it, it just looks like a bundle of ants moving around with... Nothing nothing to see here. Nothing to see, yeah. <laughs> just doing my thing. And and like that, they just avoid being oh. eaten. Ah. So it's a double-edged sword. Eh. They avoid being eaten and then they are oh, happy, happy, eat more ants. Eh. <laughs> this ant snatching assassin bug is just all around bad news. Ah. It's, it's, it's creepy, like I said. It's creepy. It's creepy. Definitely very suitable for the Halloween special. Mm. I have another creepy story as well. It gets creepier. It gets creepier. creepier. Yep. Yeah. And in this case, I'm going to talk about the Asian koal. <coughs> <laughs> that was damn good. By the way, if you're listening on Spotify, that was Sean. Ah. It's not a it's, dubbed over sound effect. It's all me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear this familiar sound at 6am in the morning, you're probably staying in Singapore. So not only is it annoying. Hey. Okay, la, it's not annoying. La, <laughs> I'm but not annoying. <laughs> not only is this sound very invasive in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this sure. bird is also very invasive of other people's home. Other birds? <laughs> and when I say other people's, I mean other birds. <laughs> did you come to my house? Like <laughs> yeah, so this bird in particular I'm talking about is actually a crow. The poor crow. But actually crow also quite... Okay, that's another topic. <laughs> but anyways... Hey, they, they, are, uh, they are misjudged Misjudged, yes. Misjudged, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, but basically, they both have very similar looking eggs. So the Asian koala and the crow, they have kind of like adapted to kind of look like each other. So actually more of like the Asian koala try to adapt to look more like the crow's egg. This is because <laughs> instead, of, instead of taking care of their own offspring like the good parents they should be, <laughs> the Asian koala will actually go into um, a crow's nest, whichever is unattended by a crow. Maybe like if the crow went out to kind of get food for his offspring mm-hmm. uh, or anything. And then if the, the, there's an empty nest, right? Yeah. So the Asian koala will kind of um, invade these nests and push off the crow's egg so that they can <laughs> implant their own egg into the nest so the crow can help bring up this um, Asian um, coral um, yeah. baby. Yeah. So it's just irresponsible parents and also very traumatic <laughs> for the crow itself thinking that like, oh, this is my, my baby that I've given birth to and then turns out it's not. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this noisy little asshole? <laughs> yes. Like? Oh wait, but you know they actually also adapt to sound like a crow. So mm. yeah. So it, it's really just all around. Ah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Sean's really good at mimicry. That's a bad. <laughs> I. We are talking about mimicry. Yeah. So <laughs> I think apt. you can actually uh, invade in other people's home. I I can invade into a crow's home. I think so. But you know what? That is just bad <laughs> that is just bad you know to to to, to i mean it, I'm, I'm glad that the asian koala chick mm. would grow mm. up well but that poor crow's egg yes. that get thrown off the tree yes and then like smashed on the floor yeah because the reason why they have to get rid of um an existing one is because crows only give birth to five every time it yeah in a clutch eight. right yeah, yeah. In a clutch yeah so actually asian corals are actually very very smart yeah and crows don't actually lay all five eggs at once as well. So there's like a pattern where like they lay one every day. Mm. So the Asian crow kind of time this together so that they will Ooh. kind of intersect and then put their eggs in without raising any suspicion. Mm. So it's really just so smart. Like like a lot of brains lah. Like big brain energy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm still thinking back of that poor egg on, mm. on the ground. Oh man. Especially yeah. in Singapore, then so hot, then you that oh, man. fried egg on the floor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so poor thing, yeah. No, but yeah, it, it's really. I mean, again, it's 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 the animal's way to survive. Yeah, I mean, when you are in nature, nature is really just no mercy, la. You just gotta yeah. do what you gotta do to survive, and I think the smartest one will always win, la, Yeah, that's like, a technique. Uh, but again, okay, but yes, these are these are birds. You know, we we all are trying to survive, but I'm not asking you to just <laughs> you know go to your friend's house. Go to your friend's house and. <laughs> To kick their baby away and put your own <laughs> child into their house, uh, thinking that that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for for humans, it's it's a whole different thing. That, that we, Damn. it's a whole whole. Uh, My plan is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, this this is is this species tactic mm. to 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 survive and yeah, you know, this trick helped them survive through all the 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 millennia of, mm. of years and everything. Mm-hmm. So. But according to my research, the crows are catching up to them already. Like they are able to tell the eggs apart mm. slowly and slow. Yeah, slowly. And BBE. Yes, the crow is uh, basically is the battle of the big brains. Yeah, battle. <laughs> yeah. Of the big. Crows, crows are smart too. Crows are very smart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and so that leads us to our final oh, animal. Final very animal fast. Already. Yeah. Uh, speaking about crows, hmm. a very dark bird, correct? Okay. Uh, my last animal is also a a dark looking bird. And this bird is the greater racket-tailed drongo. So if you have ever seen this bird before, okay, mm-hmm. this is a, a very beautiful bird with a nice dark glossy colouring oh. and very bright red eyes. And its uh, distinctive characteristic is this two very long racket mm. uh, and its tail region. So it's just basically like this uh, feather-looking thing like, at the oh, bottom. Oh, so pretty. Right, it's really pretty. And you might be thinking, aren't we talking about mimicry? This one looks... Very, very distinct, very bird, eh? not very bird, la, but it doesn't look very distinct. Eh? Oh, How is, who is it mimicking? Yellow. Who? Tell me who. <laughs> well, <laughs> they are the mimicry that they employ is not a visual one, mm? they are actually vocal mimics. Ooh. They mimic the sounds 
of other birds. So how this happens is that they usually hang around other birds and it's birds like your uh, woodpeckers or your laughing thrushes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these birds, they would, uh, you know, go and, and observe these birds mm. and they would learn their calls. Ooh. Okay? And then next, when they learn finish already, right, they will actually go and follow these birds out during their foraging periods mm. and they will just look at them, forage and hunt for insects or whatever. You know, like your woodpeckers, they will have to, to you know, oh, dig yes, through, yes, peck yes. through the wood, you know, to, to get the insects, right? So halfway through the pecking and all the foraging, right, this drongos will actually mimic the alarm calls of that, that bird species. So usually the laughing thrushes and woodpeckers, they either come in pairs or in groups, oh. right? So they have a, a signal to tell each other, hey, got predator, come ready. Oh my god! So the drongo will just mimic the sound of that, that, alarm, uh, that alarm call. To get them to stop yeah. work and... Yeah, so basically it makes them stop work and, and abandon their, their, their forage to, to fly away, oh. to panic and just fly away. And then obviously the drongo looking, wow, open hole already, can swoop in, uh, swoop in and take the, the abandoned food. Uh. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, they, they are so yeah. sneaky. And sometimes if that alarm call trick doesn't work, they can even mimic the, the sound of raptors. Mm -hmm. So like your, your your eagles and your hawks and everything, they'll mimic the sound of that. So if they hear, right. oh, the eagle coming, oh, obviously the, the woodpeckers would flee, mm. right? Because those raptors, you know, would potentially eat those birds as well. Yeah, oh my gosh, this is horrible. <laughs> they, <laughs> they would, they are, they are basically... um. Food stealers lah. Yeah. Food stealers halfway through. It looks so graceful and then... So pretty, right? Yo, know, I wouldn't think... Okay, Can you imagine like... You drive a car, right, Felicia? Uh. Can you imagine one day I, I stalk you? <laughs> I stalk you, see you at Manonor. Mm. Uh, at Manonor, then I see you order the new burger. And then halfway through, I shout... Saman, the Saman police come ready. Saman come, your, your car will get ticket, your car. Oh, no, 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 I better go. Ah, you go. run there as you run, I steal your fries. Oh my god. I run away with your whole, your whole tray of fries. But actually, uh, is I feel like this is much worse because the woodpecker, right, have to go through so much <laughs> and then have his food stolen. It's like as though you, yeah. you prep you prep your food. Yeah, and I mean, if, if you have seen my woodpecker episode, or yeah. I have a woodpecker oh, episode, yeah. you can see the mechanisms of how, how they hey, actually... There's a, yeah, there's a lot of... of, of you know, energy going into digging those holes. Uh -huh. uh, um, you know, but yeah. <laughs> and I just swoop in and take your, your... Yeah, oh my gosh. Right? Let me look at his face so I'll never have to see it. No, but to be honest, I, I love looking at them. They are yeah, really very, very pretty. pretty. Yeah. Especially those long little tails, you you wouldn't expect. I mean, they are not uncommon. Mm -hmm. But each time you look at it in Singapore, you'll be like, damn, you have that in Singapore? Yeah, like the tail is so majestic. Yeah, yeah. actually, now that you mention it, I've never seen this in Singapore. Yeah, I, I, you can see them around in our forested areas. Ooh. They're not that uncommon. Um, actually, and and I wouldn't say they're the easiest to, to spot? spot because sometimes with, with birds, you would listen to their calls and mm. like, ah, that's a, a buffy fish owl. Ah, that's a, you know, yeah. a kingfisher. But this one, they... Um, sound uh, vocal mimics. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, this one is Kingfisher. You go there, hey, it's a drongo. Yeah, it's a drongo. <laughs> but every time I I see them, I I, I do still get pretty amazed because like, you yeah. know, damn, they they're, they're so smart. Yeah. In that sense, but yeah, and they're very accurate to the species. Like oh, if that's I'm looking, yeah, if I'm following a woodpecker, the drongo would mimic the alarm call of the woodpecker. If mm. I'm following a laughing thrush, I would mimic the alarm call of the, the laughing thrush mm. and they're very accurate mm. at the sound. That's amazing. You know, they have, they have um, yeah, they're just very, I don't know, just, they're, just, they're just built different. Yeah, they really they're built, built different. different. I wonder <laughs> what is the mechanics that's happening over here. Who knows? Yeah. So, but yeah, all of these animals exist in Singapore and, and who knew that our little city, I mean, I, I, I hope this is not repetitive by now, but I'm still pretty amazed that, yeah, Singapore is such a, a city, you know, island, but, all these animals exist. Yeah, in, honestly, in I country. didn't know any of this and actually exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they're so smart. Yes. Yeah. That's so, the amazing part. This yeah. is not the end yet because, mm. as with any Halloween themed party, we need to choose the best dressed Halloween costume. Right. Yes. So, Felicia, who do you think is the best uh, mimic, is the best trickster, All the right. best trickster of the group? Hmm, if we're talking about costume, I would think. You know, I think maybe whenever I look at Halloween costume, like the most accurate one will get my attention. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually go for the the vocal mimic since it is a costume contest. So I will have to. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. So I will have to uh, kick that one out first by Aww. process of elimination. Aww. Um, I think that maybe the Weaver Ends mimics are actually pretty legit. Yeah. 
the, the caterpillar. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, have a look if you're listening or if you're watching. Go Google it. Really just have a look and you'll be really, really surprised and yeah. just so amazed by nature. Like, it's it's a very bizarre looking caterpillar. Yeah, so I would give it to the caterpillar actually. Yeah, yeah I agree, I it agree. It looks so well thought out. I agree. Yeah. And, and, and for me, at least a, a good second place because mm. I am as sadistic as I am. I love the ant snatching assassin bug. Yes. It's, it's, it's just... That, I think that's a, a good contender for second place. Yes, and it's very apt for the Halloween episode as well. It's very uh, crazy yeah. and, 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 and dark. And, yes. And, can you imagine just pasting chicken meat all over you? Oh. Yeah, I, I, I think that's wildly uh, creepy. It is. I think, yeah, I really like the um, how it fits into the theme. So I'm just going to give it my star as well. Sure. <laughs> so... These are our choices, mm-hmm. right? Uh, maybe you can let us in the look. Let, let us in. Let the, us maybe in. you can let us know down in the comments or, or even on our Instagram to tell us what you think is the the most uh, effective or most creepy um, mimic. Yeah, I mean, just give us your reason. It doesn't have to be like the most um, the best dress. Uh, yeah. Which one's your favorite, and which one are you most impressed by? Or which one you didn't know exist until now? Oh yeah, that's a really good one. Like, as well. wow, I didn't know this kind of thing in Singapore. Wow, I'm impressive. Wow, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, or or for I think a lot of my followers are also um uh, nature enthusiasts themselves. Mm. So you know, if you know even more mimics, oh, share it down in the comments. Oh my gosh, share I would the love knowledge. To learn. Yeah, you know, let people know about other mimics. Uh, there are definitely more in Singapore, which we do not have the time to cover. Yeah. So you know what? Share, share, share the love. Share yeah, the love. Share the love. Right. In the comments. Yeah. And so Felicia, as with every end of our episode, <laughs> I will ask you this question. What? What is the wildlife moment for today? Oh my gosh! I'm doing it again. Yes, it's the Halloween episode. Okay. You you. you Look very scary, so I'll give it to you. I do look very scary. I have no makeup on. So that is part of my costume. <laughs> okay, since it's a special episode, I'll do this one as well. Yes. Okay, wildlife moment. Okay, like I said earlier, I'm just really impressed with nature. And I think there's a lot of inspiration that we can take from nature. It mm-hmm. is really just... It's just amazing. But yeah, a lot of inspiration can take from nature. Like, for example, um, actually, in our everyday lives, we do take a lot of inspiration from nature already. Mm. So, for example, in architect, biomimicry. Oh, yes, biomimicry. Biomimicry, yeah. yeah. So, biomimicry is? Uh, biomimicry is when us humans actually take inspiration from the design of nature mm. and to, to kind of improve our own technologies and, 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 and uh, designs. Yeah, so just one quick random example. Mm. So, for example, the bullet train in Japan, they yeah. actually have this... Um, when, when they were building this train, they were they came across this dilemma because they were going at such high speed into the tunnel that mm. it actually creates a sonic boom at the end. Yeah, when they leave the tunnel, right? Mm. Yeah. So to counter this, mm. they actually took inspiration from the Kingfisher. Mm. So why the Kingfisher? So actually Kingfishers, they dive at top speed into water surfaces mm. and they don't actually create any splashes. Okay, like minimal splash. Mm. So they were very intrigued by like, oh, what exactly is... The, the, what which part of the kingfisher mm. actually allows this minimal splash mm. yeah so using the same method um, they kind of apply it to the bullet train as well so so the kingfisher has this like long big structure yes. that kind of breaks the air tension or the water tension mm. before they plunge in at high speed so mm. having this sharp nose for the bullet trains it also kind of like ease the, the, the pressure or like a, yeah. you know yeah like I don't know how to From explain air, it la, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but but you, you know I'm going with this like, yeah, so they it, just to break into the surface tension and release that sonic boom at the end instead yeah so the minimal sound minimal sound yeah so just like minimal it. splash yeah. yeah yeah basically the splash is uh, the sound in yeah. the train yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry the train <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah it, it, it is similar to, to the air pressure at, at the end of the tunnel where yeah. it punches through it creates that boom so yes. similarly by piercing it instead of just hitting it up front it reduces the sound mm-hmm. yeah so this is just one quick example of how nature um, is how nature provides inspiration to mm-hmm. us humans as well and mm. just like how these animals mimic the form or the sounds of other animals to achieve their end goals yeah we humans also we do it as well we do it as well we <laughs> are mim- we are the mimics to the first degree <laughs> and with that I end off with Wow, life. Wow, life. You know what? <laughs> it's 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 perfectly okay. I wouldn't say it's perfectly okay to copy people, but <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But take inspiration from. Yeah, it's it's you know sometimes 
being inspired by 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 the things around you mm. and 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 learning um and being smart about how to mimic the things around you can make you achieve wonders. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh and I hope you get inspired by 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 this episode and you know what? Look at the world around you, you mm. know, be inspired. Yes. Copy. <laughs> and if you are inspired today by any of our content, oh, yes. <laughs> you can uh, help us achieve our goals mm -hmm. by supporting us on our Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, as mentioned uh, in the middle of the episode. Yeah, so thanks again for watching and see you in the next episode. <gasps> Bye. Bye-bye.